Hey guys, how you doing? So I've just replaced all the timing components on this engine. This is a 4 liter out of an 04, yeah, 04 Ford Explorer. It's the overhead cam engine as you can see. Now, retiming this, things you have to take in mind. You have timing marks right there on the balance shaft. They have to match up with that hole. Now, you also, I have the special tool on here that is holding the crankshaft at top dead center number one, which you can't see it, but there's a key right here in the top of the crank. That should be at 12 o'clock. Now, there are no timing marks on that sprocket, on your jack shaft sprocket, or on your camshaft sprocket. All right? So what you do is you gotta get your balance shaft chain to have to go in first with the uh, tensioner, and the guide, then your left hand cassette, which is the chain, the guide, and the lower sprocket that's back here. That all has to go in together. Then you can put your crank sprocket and your jack shaft sprocket on. Now, when you put these on, you leave that bolt loose, you torque that one to, oh, I believe it's 38 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees, it's the torque to yield. You'll have to look up the torque specs on it. Um, but you go ahead and torque that one. It doesn't matter where it is, as long as your timing on the, jack, on the balance shaft is lined up and the crank is at top dead center. Just go ahead and torque that one. Then, over here, this is the right hand side. This is on the back of the engine. So if this timing set goes out, which you can see the new timing components down in there, basically what they call the cassette, which is your guides, your chain, your sprockets. It's all down in there. My timing tool is still in there. Hold on a minute, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back again. Now, what I was saying was the, <clears throat> the right-hand cassette here, as you can see all the timing components, there is a bolt right there, and this bolt is the other bolt that holds that cassette in. Now, here's the back side of your jack shaft. That is 15 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees is the torque on that. This bolt on the end of this camshaft, which is inside the special, this special holding tool right now, is a left hand threaded bolt. You can actually see on these, they have, actually do have an arrow. So, being that it's left hand thread, you turn it, let's see. Now I'm screwed up. Right hand thread is a normal bolt. You turn it right to tighten it. On this one, you turn it left to tighten it. You turn it right to loosen it. So it would be backwards from what most people are used to. All right, but it's a left hand thread. Now. I still have the special tool in here for the tensioner. That's not the proper tensioner. I've got to put that in. But, <clears throat> excuse me. The, uh, that is the only left-handed bolt, left-hand thread bolt in the set is the one here. All the rest of them are standard right hands. The only two torque to yield bolts are the one in the front and rear of the jack shaft. Everything else is reusable. So, keep that in mind. Um, if you're really astute at how to do this, you can do this without a, the special tools, but you really, really have to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, because like I said, there's no timing marks. So, 63 foot-pounds here, same on the back. Now, to time these camshafts, those two slots are just below center in the camshaft. When you're number one top dead center, both cams should be with these two slots just below center. The camshaft holding tool that is on the end of that camshaft actually mates into here and then locks down to those two holes. Whoop. So if you have some way to hold this, and th these two are parallel to the top, to this upper head surface where the valve cover mounts. Now, that's how you hold the cams. You have to hold the crank at top dead center number one. And as long as you hold the cams in place while you tighten everything down, 
everything is timed. These are all slip fit, there are no keyways. The only thing that is keyed on this engine is your crank sprocket. Everything else is slip fit and they use the bolts to hold it tight. So hopefully guys, if you're having trouble getting one of these four liters in time or busted the uh, timing set, which this one did, um, you can see I've got a whole bucket full of broken timing components down here on the floor. Those, every one of those pieces that's in there was in the oil pan. <clears throat> so I highly recommend, not only that, but this is, a, well these aren't, but all these pieces and that tensioner right there, let me back back out, that was all, all these broken pieces were all in the right hand cassette. They, I, I picked them out of the spot in the back of the head. Okay, they all got picked out of here. So, like I said, if you end up if you end up with a broken timing set in these, I highly recommend dropping the oil pan. Um, drop the oil pan, and then what do they call that? The lower block cradle, which actually mounts up here where you would normally think the standard oil pan would mount. Clean out clean out your oil pump pickup because I had chunks up in there. Um, clean out the pan, clean out the lower block cradle because you will have chunks everywhere. So anyway guys, I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, ask. just <clears throat> drop me something in the comments and ask me. Click the like button, click the subscribe button while you're here. And hopefully this helps you out if you're having issues with a four liter. So. And like I said, if you have any other questions, put them down in the comments section. I'll try and answer them best I can.